Let, let's talk to the uh, thing of inferiority complex. So I'll, I'll, I'll bring up my experience at dental school. Um, so the dental school, like I said, I was the only black guy there. And I guess my upbringing and my background was not the normal for everybody else that I was doing um, dental school with. So it was almost as if I was fitting into the norms of everybody else. Um, I just didn't have that luxury of, you know, the way I do things or my culture, my background is the normal for everybody else. So did you guys ever feel like, um, you fitted in straight away, or did you feel like you almost had to cater to everybody else that you were with? I feel like if I was answering, I feel like I fitted in straight away. Just as I said, I live with three Asian guys, and I feel like we just joke to like when we compare ourselves, we had a, a similar background, similar upbringing. Um, even though they were Asian. So I feel like mm. we just used that personal experience, um, we brought it together. So I feel like I just fitted in straight away because we just fitted in together. And then we, there was no settling period. I feel like that was okay. Yeah, I don't think mm. I suffered from that one in that aspect. TJ yeah, Dunks Dapper? Yeah, I think for me, like um, just in general, because it was, it was the same thing really, with sixth form and things like that, even, even high school to an extent. Well, um, I guess the other people that were from the same area as me or looks like me, they weren't really as bothered about academics or things like this. So I've always known that, uh, for example, in the classroom, I was friends with different people. So who I was like when I'm back at home on the streets, I think that I think it was always there, maybe lingering, but I kind of ignored it and got used to it in a way that, let's say, <laughs> I remember in first year when people were coming to lectures, the people used to dress up, man. the people used to wear shirts and stuff. But me, I've always been a tracksuit guy. <laughs> I've, I've always wear a tracksuit and that's just, that's just who I am. Like, I'd rather be comfortable. And I guess initially, maybe that in the back of my head, I was thinking, wait, maybe if I'm wearing a, a do-rag and a tracksuit, I might appear this certain way and it might take away from this. But eventually, I mean, like, I think I've just got used to it in a stage where I'm just going to be me regardless. And it doesn't really matter that there's those culture differences there. But of, of course, I can see why that would somebody else might feel a certain way if um, if, if those barriers were there for sure. Mm. Would you say that your relationships with the tutors um, was, did you have good relationships with your tutors? Did they, were they understanding to maybe the way that you learn to approach things? Did you feel like there was that sort of connection with tutors at dental school? I, I, feel, like, I feel like it was still there. Um, maybe b before the first had the conversation, there might have been some preconceptions in their head about this certain person because they, they look or sound or talk differently. But I think eventually that's overcome once you actually have these conversations and they realise that you are the, you are meant to be in dental school. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think I'm the same as TJ. Um, and I think the one thing that I was lucky with in Liverpool is I actually had a black Nigerian tutor, which right. was very rare to see. Um, it was just nice. It was like, it's, it's a yeah, very weird. So I was actually going to a church in Liverpool. Um, I don't, um, Arnold, you might know, uh, Love Assembly. Uh, yeah. So the way it works in Liverpool is that you don't really go in much in first year. So this tutor had obviously been there for a long time. And then it got to second year in Liverpool, the second year, it ramps up a lot. So you're in like almost every day, like you go in, it'll be dark. You leave and it'll be dark. And then one day in church, this lady came up to me and I said, um, I'm a dentist. And she said, oh, me too, I tutor um, at University of Liverpool Hospital. And I said, oh, wow. And just from there, it was just organic. And it was just a case of being able to see somebody mm -hmm. that's the same colour as you, um, that's got that far. And I was just like, wow, this person has got there. And it got to a point where any time that I needed help, when you're so far away from home, It'd just be nice to have someone there um, to go to, even to the point where my finals, I was so stressed. Like it got to a point where I was really, really stressed. And she was just, I went to her the weekend before my finals, um, went to her office. She was just like, take it calm. Don't do anything. You've done all the learning you need to do. She actually encouraged me to watch um, Nollywood films the weekend before my finals. <laughs> just like, just relax. Um, it was just nice. Nice to see. I don't know if anyone else has the experience of having black tutors in in university, but it was just nice to see. It's just another person that you could say, oh, they've done it. Um, 
I can be there as well. Dr. Mm. Um, Dapper, you were speaking about the inferiority complex. Um, did, did you have any personal experiences of that or do you see other um, black dentists suffering from that? Yeah, I think I had it in dental school and and it became more so pronounced in uh, post uh, dental school. And I think um, firstly was that similar to TJ, like like I like track shoots, like, you know, I, I, it was a very crazy experience for me because, you know, from South London, you know, um, from being around in a certain environment, um, all you know is all you know. And all of a sudden, um, I had a bit of a car. I went to quite a good sixth form. You're exposed to a different way of how, um, for example, um, other ethnics or, uh, no, or other kind of uh, colors and creeds kind of do things and it kind of opens up your world. And I found that it's crazy in uh, dental school. No one was really, I did have, I did have a few racial kind of situations but on the whole, um, um, you all, at the whole, you know, everyone was cool. But you almost think that do I deserve to be here? You know mm. the way you talk. Like I've learned in that time to kind of present myself better. Like the way um, Dr. Dapper was talking earlier. Like how you kind of present yourself. How you kind of um, how you kind of come across. You know. Um, it's something you learn over time to articulate yourself, to bring yourself up, you know what I mean? But if you're just like, yo, I'm just, from, I'm just here in it. I'm just like, you know, it's like, yeah, boom, kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, being in that environment, it gave me the ability to, to switch it up. And I think that's just, I think probably all have had to kind of do, you know how to switch up according to the people that you're with. So when you're with your homeboys, you know how to talk. And like when you're with, you know, um, uh, you know, other people, you like, you know how to kind of, you know how to talk kind of thing, you know what I'm saying? Um, so you almost kind of feel like, wow, like, um, do you, like, do you almost deserve to be here? But you did, you, you passed the interview, you did, you got the grades, you did all of that, but you still think like, yo, but then you still find also some unconscious bias in some mm. situations, you know? And it's not the other people's fault per se, um, but it's it's there, you know, and um, um, so that that that's one thing I have to. And one thing which was tricky for me was that in my year there was um, four four, four um, black people, just three guys, including myself, and one female. No, no, there was two. There was quite a few. And after the first or second year, there was only two of us left. Wow. Yeah. There was only two of us left. And that was very scary. And, and there was something we had called remediation, where you had to retake um, certain practical exercises. And remember there was one remediation, 75% of us were all black, you know? And that was a very, very, very scary thought. And not to say that, you know, so I'm not trying to imply anything, but when you see that, you think, yo, we're used to working together, like pushing each other, revising together, and then boom, this thing happens, you know? So there's that, like survival of the fittest kind of thing. But then um, in, in, uh, in, in kind of going through um, uh, after, you know, uni, when I was landing my, I did my, I did a DF2 or core training. And um, shortly after, shortly into doing that in a few months, I then knew that I wanted to be in general practice. And, um, so I was um, applying, you know, um, for associate jobs just to do on a Saturday. Um, and um, I, then a, a private practice in Wimbledon reached out to me. And I, I'll, I'll be always be eternally grateful to them, you know, um, because they took me on as a young uh, dentist. And that was my first, one of my first proper associate jobs. Imagine, if one of the first mm -hmm. proper associate jobs being a, a private, in the private practice. That's a huge risk. I mean, and they they took me and I made mistakes, not so much clinical, but just general kind of, you just don't know, right? But the patients that I had, I'll be honest with you, I first thought that patients wouldn't come and see me. 
and the staff was cool, everybody, but I thought patients would come or, or not come back or not um, like, ex, like accept treatment. I, it was crazy, right? And sometimes, I'll be honest with you, I would reduce the price. <laughs> Seriously. I would like, I, I've, had, I've had like a, a some, someone who's been knighted, you know, I've treated someone who's been knighted, you know, I, I know lawyers, consultants, you know, these well-to-do guys. And you think, and when you're presenting like, okay, this is the situation. For example, the person needs a filling. You showed them the X-ray. It's carries there. So this carries there needs to be treated. But I'll see the composite. I said, oh, it's this person. I'll, I'll reduce it by like you know, 20, 30 pounds. Because I'm thinking like, they won't accept. That's madness. Mm. Um, but this happened for a long time. And after I finish the treatment, you know, like give the patient a mirror. You say, oh, you know, you know, uh, is it okay? Or, or uh, uh, is that? Are you okay? Is it all right? And the person like, yeah, you're the dentist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> crazy, very serious, man. Seriously, but then yeah. I, you know, I I realized I was in that situation and I snapped out of it. Mm. Yeah, now I don't know if you guys have experienced this, um, Doctor Daps or Doctor Dapper, but I found that the experience that I had at dental school. I found dental school tough. And I think, I don't know if it's because of the way it was set up and structured. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. once I got out of dental school and started um, general practice, I found that, you know what, I'm actually made for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Mm. I find that, you know, in the reality of dentistry, you've got to be a people person. 100%. You've got to love communicating to people. Yeah. You know, if you go an extra mile for people, um, people will, will love you. People will want to come back to you. And I think those are things that um, people from our backgrounds and cultures are very good at. We're very good at being welcoming to people. We're good at talking to people. We're, we're good at making people feel at ease, comfortable. Um, but I didn't know that when I was in dental school that these skills would actually be the ones that helped me excel as a dentist. 100%. And, and one, one, one of the things I've come to realize it's the soft skills and as you said like i think and, and when i went on the smart fast course with dr Mid, he said he, one, his greatest strength one of his greatest strength is building rapport with patients i said wow that's similar to me you know yeah and and this is before this is before the um the dentistry before you give the injection before you you, you know you try recreate the anatomy of a composite or try to do anything you know you know they, when, when patients buy or love you, that's it. Even, and I always say this, yeah, even if things don't go according to plan. That's it. Yeah. yeah. As long as they like you, like, so example, just say you do an emole, you start mole, mole endo, you start root canal treatment, and then whilst doing it, you find that one of the canals are blocked, right? And you can't get beyond it or whatever the case may be. So what I do... You know, you don't panic. You say, okay, you know, you close up, do that. Let the person get up and say, okay, all right. So how was the experience? Oh, yeah, it was all right, blah, 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 blah. So, oh, you know what? Um, you know, I was able to complete the treatment today because of X, Y, and Z. However, I know someone who can. <laughs> you know, you find that, you know, you know, there's an issue that you've come up with, but you've given them a solution. That's what all people want. And if the person believes in you so much, they will trust your recommendation, yeah? Because they, they, they buy into you, right? And as you said, I think people from our community, like, you know, we have that kind of rapport. One of my patients, you know, one guy, one prominent guy came to see me last week. And, you know, he comes in, you know, we've got Afro, we've got WizKids, you uh, album <laughs> playing, you know. You know, and all of that, you know, on the TV, and he goes, Bro, I feel at home, man. I feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? And this is before we do anything, you know what I'm saying? So, as you just say, as, as you said, like, you know, it's the soft skills. And one thing I found, I'll just be totally honest with you, you always found like in the industry, there was like a hierarchy. So, you got the guy who was, you know, who won all the awards. You know who you know the guys who you know creme de la creme or considered to be the most clinically able or or whatever that you saw that these guys become 
Max Facts or restorative gods of our generation. Yeah? <laughs> but bro, when it comes to the real life, after, when you're out of that bubble and you come to the, when the rubber hits the road, because some of us have been from certain places and we know how to make things work, you find that when you carve your own path and you make your own way, no one can tell you anything. Yeah, 100%. You know what I'm saying? So it is what 100%. it is. Sorry. TJ, I, yeah. I, I want you to, 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 to come in, um, in on this. So, yeah, tell us more about the experience of being a, a black male dental student. Um, are there any challenges that you're, you're currently facing or that you see as challenges for other people that want to get to where you are or are in that similar position? Yeah, I was, I was just listening, trying to, trying to reflect on whether... For example, what the I wish I could see what the patient's first thoughts were when I like walk into the, the clinic or when I'm first introducing myself and, and when I'm speaking to them because it, it is something that you guess you'll never really 100% know fully. So I think it's quite interesting just to think about that what's happening subconsciously when when, when that, that's all happening. And I, I guess I feel like there must be to an extent some sort of uh, preconception when when that does happen. But I guess if you do focus on those rapport building skills, as Dr. Duffer was saying, I guess that can turn to your advantage and get patients to, to love you in that aspect. Um, as, as regards to people following behind me, um, uh, well, I don't know, I find it, I find it quite, not, not irritating, but I guess it links back to what I was saying about exposure when you're talking to certain people. I remember I, I'm talking to certain people that are just doing their first degree now. And I'm saying, well, what, do you ever consider dentistry? And they're saying, yeah, I did think about it, but I'm not really sure whether I can do all whether it's for me and I'm just I always want to just grab them and say just do it now if you, if you think that you might like it just just go for it and apply but I, I do think for some people they should, like it's so it's so deeply built that maybe that they don't think they can do it that mm. to an extent maybe they feel like it's too late to, to try to pick that up or that even people that are in in a level right now they feel like it's too late for them to do this or I didn't do well with GCSE or I don't have any work experience maybe it's too late to do this and that but then I know one person that just applied to medicine as a, as a postgrad now and um, he's got his first interview and then just seeing that just makes me so proud. So I think yeah. definitely what um, like social media now, I think is definitely helping in a, in a, in a big way. Because um, even me, when I'm looking for like revision techniques or if I'm going to anything, the first thing I'll do now is I'll search up um, even like sometimes with podcasts, sometimes with um, YouTube videos, sometimes with Instagram, you see other people um, that are doing certain things like even all three of you guys that are on social media you can see that and I think it, I think it is helping in a way and I think hopefully especially with the um, access to information where people are uploading videos for everyone now um, mm. on tips in getting into school I think that will help and I think it is ticking to the way that we want it to be like yeah hoping to apply to dentistry as a graduate and today I entered the dental mentor MMI interview practice. I learned a lot more about the types of interview questions, how to portray myself at interview and I also got a lot of helpful feedback on things I should change, things I should say and things I shouldn't say. So overall I found this experience very, very helpful. To help my confidence. Up until now, I uh, I was really worried about the interviews. I didn't think I really knew how to do it, and didn't think I'd do particularly well. But after today, I have a lot more confidence in myself. I realised that actually I can do it, and it is doable. The workshop today really helped me a lot with the interview prep. They gave really constructive comments and very personalized comments as well, so I really enjoyed it. If 
you're thinking about studying dentistry, um, whether you're in college or whether you're in, in a degree right now, I think just have a chat with them and they will help you from start to finish.